Your client may ask you to save a copy of this logo and post a version on the web so that the rest of the staff can preview it. Before we do that, a good idea is to measure how big your logo is. So for example, if your client says, we don't want a logo that's bigger than four inches either direction, so width or height, you should make sure that your logo isn't that big. To do that, what you want to do is create guide rules along your logo. So I'm going to create a guide rule here, one at the top of the petal, one at the bottom of the stem, and one to the right as well. So here are my guide rules. I can look at my ruler and see, well, is it more than four inches? I think so. But a good way is to reset your zero marker. If you click over here in the corner and click and drag and drag it to the intersection of where your height and width begin, then you can easily see if it's under four inches. And mine is not. It definitely is under four inches on the height, but not in the width. So to change that, I can grab the logo, and to make sure it all sticks together, I can go to Object, Group, and now I can decrease the size of the logo by holding the Shift key down and dragging so that it's under four inches. And there you go. If I don't hold the Shift key down, so I'll undo and just drag, notice how it manipulates the type and distorts it, and you don't want this. So I'm going to undo, and again, I want to hold the Shift key down and drag it so that I'm at or under 4 inches. Now I want to crop this logo so that I can post it on the web. If I use my Artboard tool, which is down here, it'll give me some handles so that I can crop in on this logo. So I'm just going to grab these handles and come in. I'm going to use my hand tool so that I can see what I'm doing. Grab the artboard tool again. Now I can save for web. I'm going to go to File, Save for Web and Devices, and here's my logo. The things I want to make sure when I'm in this window is that I'm saving as a JPEG and that it's optimized. These other things like quality, if you increase this quality size, it's going to increase how big this file size is, which means it takes more loading time for the logo to appear on the website. So then I hit save, and I'll save my logo by adding the word web to it. And it goes into the folder that my original Illustrator document is in. So now both of my original and the JPEG files are in the same folder. Your client may ask you to view this logo at a smaller size, say 25%. Well, to do that, you want to make a copy of your logo and then scale it down. So I'm going to draw an imaginary box around my logo using the selection tool, and I'm going to go ahead and group this, so Command-G or Control-G, and I want to make a copy. So to make a copy, I go to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. And this creates an exact duplicate of my logo. Now I'll move this down, and now I want to make a smaller version of it. If I go to Object, Transform, Scale, I can plug in the percentage that I want. And in this case, I want 25%. And now I have a smaller logo that I can use on, say, a business card or a name tag. Your client may ask you to make several versions of this logo, specifically ones that are in black and white. So to do this, the first thing you want to make sure is that you make duplicates only when you're done with designing your logo. Otherwise, you'll make tiny fixes to one, and you'll have to go and make those tiny fixes to all your versions. So say I'm done with my logo, and I want to make a copy of it, but this time make it black and white. I'm going to move this logo out of the way by grabbing it and holding my shift arrow key down. And now I'm going to draw an imaginary box over the full version logo and I'll group it. I want to go to edit copy which is command C or control C and then paste which is command V or control V on a PC. 
and now I have a second version of my logo. I want to make these petals a gray, but to do that I need to make some ungrouping happen. So when I click on my flower, it's also grouped, so I'm going to ungroup that as well. Now I'm going to select each of my petals here in my flower, and I'm going to go to the fill square and I'm going to change it to a gray. Now I like to use web colors in this instance but if I really want a specific gray I can go to my color picker and I can choose the gray based on a percentage of black. So say I want 22 percent. Then I can get a nice gray there. Now I need to make a smaller version of this black and white logo. I'm going to sweep over it drawing an imaginary box with my selection tool. I'm going to group it. I'm going to copy Command C and paste Command V and I'll bring this one down and now I need to scale it down just like I did this color version. So I'm going to go to Object Transform Scale and make sure this says 25 percent. And there's my smaller black and white version of my logo. Now I just want to make sure when I zoom out command minus that I kind of center this on the page a little bit. There we go. If any of these panels are ever in your way when you're designing you can always click on these double arrows here and that will collapse them. The double arrows also expand the panels. The next thing I want to do is make sure I save. That's a huge important step right here before we start saving as a PDF. So I went ahead and command S to save or you can go to file save as well. Now I'm going to save as a PDF. So save as and I want to change this to a PDF. And I want to make sure it's in my projects folder and I'll hit save. Go ahead and hit save again. This is asking you about compatibility. And there you go. So one thing I want you to notice is now I'm working in my PDF file. So if I have to make a change to this flower, let's say, it's not going to change the original AI file, it's going to change the PDF. And we don't want this. We want to always be working in the original native Illustrator file. So I'm going to close out of this without saving and I want to make sure I open the original AI file. Now anytime I make fixes I want to resave as a PDF so that those fixes are on the new PDF. But again, you always want to be working on your AI file. That's why it's so important to save before you save as a PDF. I hope this tutorial taught you the basic skills of designing a logo in Illustrator CS5. This was a very basic tutorial. There's so much more to learn about Illustrator.